right. That's what it is. It is Tuesday. And if it's Tuesday, that means it's time. Hey, there we are. Let's see. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, listen, it's Comic Book School Live tonight. We have a very special episode where we do an overview of some software that you can use if you're a writer, um, and then some great stories that you can use to uh, pique your interest and maybe help you work on your next story. And uh, I'm Buddy Scalera. I'm your host and a Marvel Comics writer. And oh, no, stop, stop, stop all the cheering. Uh, save your cheering for my co-host, uh, also a writer of some note, the famous three-time Emmy Award-winning Mike Fasolo. Hello, buddy. Thanks for having me. Yeah. <laughs> do, do you hear the applause? I do. I do. I have a little applause thing in the background. It always, That's right. It's always there. That's right. When I say Mike Fasolo, people are like... Who? <laughs> Bring it on. There you go. <laughs> So I found sound effects, Mike. So we will forevermore have some sound effects uh, for the show. And tonight I'm going to try and run the show using my um, my Elgato, which I've only had for a year and a half. Yeah, well, have you learned how to use it? A little bit. Push a, a button. Bit. Let's see what it does. Let's see what it does. So I have to, they're supposed to be able to remove a background. Ah, oh, that's what I have to do. To remove the background. Oh. That's it. Well that's done, it. sir. So, Mike, we have a, um, a presentation, and I will press uh, start on that presentation. Oh, that's not it. That's not the that's, one. That's not it. That was Freeze let's, Buddy. Let's see. We're, we're working on it. We are definitely working. I'm trying to use the tool that I insisted I needed as a Christmas gift one year. <laughs> And it's a good thing you didn't didn't get this uh, up and running beforehand. No, I had it, and then I I got a little bit thrown off. So let me um let me go back one slide. Maybe it's the hat. Is it the hat? Maybe the hat. Um. All right. Let's see. Da -na, da -na, da -na. That work? You see the slide? Uh, that did not work. Hmm. All right. Let's just do it the old way. <laughs> Let's go. This is why we have so many followers. Yeah, I know. We're losing them as we go. <laughs> All right, here we go. Here we go. Let's try this one more time. This is pretty bad. I see comments flying through, Mike. Are you able to? Uh... I don't see any comments. I don't know. I don't know what's uh, what's going on with my comment section, but it's not there. I probably, I probably need to, uh, let's see, let's try it one more time. We're going to go to present. We're going to go to share. We're going to share a window and then we're going to share. That's it. Oh. All right. Let's see what kind of guff I'm getting from everybody. Oh, Kevin's just saying hi to everybody. Hi, Kevin. Time, time for what? Kevin, Glenn was paying attention. I, I want you to know. <laughs> Going to Rod, I'm going to over to Rodney Dangerfield from Caddyshack, and Jared out all the way from Australia. So I'm pretty excited about that. So Mike, tonight we have a, a pretty in-depth conversation about uh, something called mind mapping software, and I'm ready to show you what that looks like, and also show you where you can see an actual working demo uh, that I've put on uh, on our YouTube channel. Does that sound good to you? That sounds awesome. That sounds good. Um, again, we're going to try this. I'm going to see if I can progress the slides and just see real quick tonight. Ah, there it is. Tonight, March is hat month. I'm wearing a hat and you're wearing a hat. Mike, what, what is that hat that you're wearing? This is my train conductor hat. It's your train mm -hmm. conductor hat. Do you, yeah. do you conduct a train? Do you play Thomas with the kids in the neighborhood? What's the... I, I used to conduct trains back in my, my days of... Uh... In New York, when I didn't have a job, I would <laughs> yeah, ride that's, rails. That's what you did. Yeah. 
That's what happens. Um, well, this hat in particular, this says Comics Vision on it. Let's go back to the uh, let's go back to this and I'll um let's see. Mine says Comics Vision. That was uh what was Comics Vision, Mike? Comics Vision was our pre-YouTube uh comedy comics channel. That's right. Back in the days of New Jersey and Wizard. That's right. We uh we I we I started Comics Vision before I joined Wizard and then uh, it found its footing when I started at Wizard, and I asked you to be my temporary co-host until I found somebody better. <laughs> and we ran the show for four and a half years, right, Mike? We did, yeah, just like just like this. I'm going to be a temporary co-host, and then until I find somebody better. Yep, yep. We should uh, we should have continued with Comics Vision. Yes, we should have. But there's a lot of things we should have done in this world. But one of them is this: we should get on with our uh, presentation. So today, uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about what mind mapping is, um, and then how uh, I've discovered a piece of software called Milanote uh, that allows you to do mind mapping, and we'll do a little bit of a demo. So, um, but first thing, uh, Mike, are you are you familiar with the technique of mind mapping? Do you ever do mapping of your characters? I have never mind mapped, no, but I, I know no. of it. You know, you know what it is. So um, in an episode, two episodes ago, uh, I showed this. Uh, this is a project that I'm working on. And what you'll see, you can see a little cor right here in the corner. That's a railing. Uh, I have an entire wall in my house and in my office, actually, uh, floor to ceiling painted uh, and whiteboard paint. You, you can get it at Home Depot. You sand the, the wall down and you paint it. And when it dries, you can use dry erase markers on it. It's pretty impressive. It is. So I used to, the kids used to use it. And then as they got older, uh, they didn't use it as much. So now I use it for my mind mapping, but you can kind of see like over here, there was a patch replaced in the wall. And then the, the scene here is starting to split. So the wall probably needs a good rehabilitation. When you're ever, when you're walking down the stairs, you ever brush it with your shoulder and erase half of your characters? <laughs> <laughs> I, I have on occasion. Um, I'm less likely to brush up against it, but other people definitely have. So, um, I, so what, what I want to note here is that um, I was mapping this story, and you're going to just sort of put a mental note of this. Um, I had a bodyguard. I had three characters: Louis, Angelo, and Frankie. Uh, I had a police detective. Um, I had a, a big bad uh, boss level villain called Mad Dog. And then Panda and Tiger, let's see, I'll just, I'll take us off the screen, Tiger and Lily. And then what I was doing was trying to figure out, like, of these characters in this crime caper, uh, of these characters, like, what were their personality traits? So as I'm working, I'm running out of space. I blurred a few things uh, because there were a couple things I don't even want to reveal at this point. Uh, I'm going to work on this story, hopefully pitch it to an editor. Uh, but the, th the genesis of this, Mike, was... I had pitched it to an editor. I had shown it to you. We thought it was pretty good, right? Yeah, I enjoyed it. It's a lot of fun. And he told me that it uh, it was not good. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, when I got over stomping around um, and I kind of looked at it objectively, I was like, okay, I can see there's problems. So I, I was trying to figure out how to mind map. I started drawing it, but then it was getting messy. I think one of the things I wanted to just point out here was you had it, Louis, Angelo, and Frankie, and then I wanted to shift Frankie over here and then move Louis and Angelo over here. Well, that's not exactly easy. You have to erase the whole board. Um, so I started looking for different mind mapping software, and I've used some mind mapping software in the past, uh, but I was trying to find something that would really work for me, and I, I, I stumbled upon this. Um, and I'll show you a demo of this, uh, but what this is, is called Milanote. It'll run in your browser, but it'll also run as an app. And I think one of the things I wanted to point out is notice how the names of the characters have changed a little bit, and then all of them are represented by an animal icon. So prior to this, if you go back and you look, you'll see like they just had regular names. And then as I started going, I realized, wow, there's an animal theme here that I wanted to get more deeply into um, and decided that those animal characteristics would also be part of their personalities. Now, this will not be an anthropomorphic story. The characters will be real humans, 
um, but they will have nicknames because in good criminal stories, everybody has a great nickname. Of course. And these characters. So you'll notice also, remember I noted that Frankie would go to the left and Lewis would go to the right. Um, I wanted this to be a scale of good to bad. So the far right, all my good guy characters, they were generally good people. The ones in the middle, kind of uh, good and bad, had some good and bad. And then the further you get to the left, uh, the more criminal-like and dangerous they are as characters. Now, you know, I could keep playing with this forever. I, I kind of got it in the first round, but it was when I was over here, I realized that I needed to uh, use something uh, that was a little bit more flexible. So I'll just pause there for a minute. I know that you checked out Mila Note uh, from my demo. What were your thoughts? It seemed very, very easy to use um, from what you were saying. And I mean, I've, I've never used the mind mapping technique, but the way you were laying it out, it makes it seem pretty simple that you can definitely organize your characters and their motivations through this. Yeah, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna show real quick. I wanna, um, I'm just gonna grab it right from the middle and I'm going to stop the screen and I'm gonna share um, the window for this. Okay, so I'm just gonna pick up right in the middle, Mike, but actually I'm gonna start right about here where we are. And then this one was blue because I wanted to show a tenuous line, but I also wanted to show that in this case, this character was good, right? The police officer is good. Um, in this case, you know, we have very iconic characters. So we jump ahead over right here, here, but I can also something that I wanted to show you free version. Else. I'll probably, because I have a very specific time and place for my story. Um, here's my story map. Once again, I, you can see I actually use this exact one, the premise, the stakes, so on and so forth. You can see when it comes out of the box, it's right. So that was my, I did a quick overview. Were you able to hear the audio? I was, and I can still hear it in the background. Is it off now? It's off now, yes. It's off now. <laughs> so I did a about a 25 to 30 minute overview of the Mila Note software. Um, what, I, what I'd like to do, Mike, and I, I'm going to need your help, is to begin to do some reviews of software that we think will be helpful to our community of writers and artists. Now, you and I are both professional writers, me being a comic book writer, you being a television writer. Um, we're going to be looking at some of those software packages, but then we may need to rely on some artists uh, who are friends with us who can help review some of the software that's available for artists. I, yeah, I think, I think we really need to do that because um, software like this is not, well, the version I was using was a free version. Uh, but then there's a paid version. I think it's really important for you to decide what tools you're going to use uh, and then break down what's most effective for you. When you when you were playing around with Milano, what were your thoughts? I mean, I, I think it's very, it's very simple. It's also very streamlined that you can pick up on it very quickly. Yeah. And, you know, if like you were saying, um, you get, I don't know how many cards you get for free when you're using the free version, like 14 or something. And yeah, if I don't really, know how many cards exactly you get, but it's enough. You know, I yeah. was able to map an entire story on it. But then if I wanted to save it, I can export it. But then if I really wanted to then tell a second story off it, what was great about it was, yeah, I can do an upgraded version. Then I have unlimited amounts of storage space and icons and pictures and drop videos. Yeah, that's that's the thing. I mean, the, the paid version is always, you know, much better than the the free version so it all just yeah. also just depends on on what you're really looking to do if you're looking to do something very quick by just mapping out one story free version is fine but if you really want to hammer it down and get every little bit in there then uh yeah go for the go for the full full monty so what i found interesting was you know it's very easy to do this in powerpoint like just you know drawing the characters placing them you can do that on PowerPoint. I use Visio at work, which is like PowerPoint made for flowcharts. Okay, you can use that. A lot of people uh, will be comfortable with that. But what I was truly amazed with, Mike, were the in-depth tools that allowed you to dive into the story, um, breaking down the story outline and the story arc. And I admitted to you, I realized I didn't, I didn't even notice the gaps in my story. 
And it was like a great writing class. Like you suddenly noticed what the problem was in the story. And, and, and I, I didn't see it in, until that editor got back to me with his comments. And I thought, wow, this guy's right. But then how do I fix it? It's been so long since I've taken a writing class. Yeah. Right. You just yeah. lose that. And I, it was kind of a shame. I was, I was a little embarrassed that I just didn't remember all of the basics. It happens. It happens. It, it doesn't happen to you. Oh, it happens to me all the time. All the time. Well, I want people to be able to uh, take a look and I'll show, show you where it is and then we'll go on to the next part of the show. Um, if you check it out here, you'll see that uh, this is uh, right here, Tools for Creators. Uh, and this will be the first in a series of Tools for Creators. Uh, we're going to be taking a look uh, at Visio. Uh, there's a scalpel. Uh, and I believe you're going to be sharing uh, your knowledge of Final Draft because you use Final Draft Pro. Is that what it's called? Uh, I think it's just Final Draft. Might be Final Draft Pro. I don't know. Final Final Draft. Final draft? <laughs> the final version of Final Draft. The final version. Final Final version. Anyway, we'll be taking a look at some software, and again, then we'll be uh, tapping into some of our art partners uh, to show us some additional software that artists might want to use. So. Um, I feel good about that, Mike. What about you? Yep. It's going to be very exciting. All right. Good. So I am going to take us along to our next part of the show. Um, this I'm calling Signs of Doom. <laughs> um, so the headline reads, um, it should be like, you know, here's the beginning of The Walking Dead, but uh, the, the, the show says... Scientists have revived a zombie virus. I don't know why they put it in air quotes. Uh, if it's a zombie virus, it's a zombie virus. That's <laughs> it. A zombie virus that spent 48,500 years in permafrost, leading you to the question, why did they take this out of the ground? Yes, that was, that was my first question when you sent this to me. But then I started thinking about it. Okay. And the thing is, and and... They take it out. They realize it's the virus. And now they have time to figure out how it works. If there's a cure, if there's some sort of shot we can get to prevent us from getting it. But then, of course, on the other side, you think, oh, they pull it out of the permafrost. It defrosts and just takes over somebody. And then it causes the zombie apocalypse. Uh, number one, I... I kind of, when I thought permafrost, I thought it would be more than two guys in windbreakers. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't look that cold. <laughs> it doesn't look that cold. You're like, that's permafrost? <laughs> well, like, it looks like, you know, it just looks it's like a bloody spring in Jersey. <laughs> but when I saw this, I had a couple thoughts. You know, this is the beginning of a movie, right? Yes. This is the beginning of a movie. And, and you know, you know, who knows where COVID-19 came from, you know, seems plausible enough that it came from somewhere. We don't oh, exactly it know. It came from somewhere. It came from somewhere. But I have two observations about this, Mike. So observation number one is, you know, like, what, like, what are they thinking? But observation number two, I drilled down and I read this quote in the research paper, Miner, that was the lead researcher, labeled the direct infection of humans with ancient pathogens released from perma permafrost as currently improbable, right? Oh, it's it's currently improbable. It's like a zombie virus. <laughs> yeah, this ancient pathogen is currently improbable. But then she goes and does the Hollywood cinematic thing of this currently improbable virus and names it the Methuselah microorganism named after a biblical figure within the longest lifespan of the Bible. Mike, that's the title of the, the movie. The Methuselah. Methuselah, right? Methuselah microorganism. <laughs> like, I, I felt a lot better when she just said it, it was currently improbable, but when she named it the Methuselah microorganism, I knew, okay, well, that that's it. You're casting, you know, uh, Cage, Nicholas Cage is going to be in there, <laughs> right? The Methuselah, right? He has to go stop the Methuselah organ microorganism. Yeah. 
Yeah. I'm, all I'm right. Okay. So uh, do you agree? Like, I don't feel much better when, when that researcher goes, well, it's currently improbable. Yeah, it's one of those things where as soon as you read about it, you're like, this is just a bad idea. That's a bad you know? idea. First of all, were they were they looking for a virus or were they just digging yeah. in the permafrost and accidentally found it? No, they are active they actively look for vi ancient viruses in the permafrost. And uh, they said they they look for like really scary stuff like the zombie virus. They're looking for it, and oh lo and behold, they found it. This is right. this will come back to bite us in the ass. Absolutely. Right. Like this feels like a terribly bad idea. Hold on. Let's see. What, uh, they made three movies with this pre premise and they were terrible. <laughs> yes, Glenn, they made three movies, but they didn't have the term Methuselah microorganism, right? Like I think they just. That makes all the difference. That makes all the difference. Okay. So writers uh, who are out there, artists who are out there, artists, I hope if we do uh, have a digging expedition in permafrost that looks a little cooler than uh <laughs> than this this looks like kind of like just a couple guys digging in the backyard <laughs> right he's got a windbreaker and probably they blurred out the rest because they probably have a six pack off in the corner it doesn't he's, look he's that got cool. a little pokey thing he's going in the hole yeah, he's got a little pokey thing it doesn't <laughs> it's not really scary but i do want i do want to draw your attention um so you see here, this is written by Katie Hunt of CNN. And I just, um, as I was reading the quote, I wanted to zoom in on Katie's very happy face as she's reporting about a 48,000 <laughs> year old zombie virus. Katie looks like, like they should change Katie's profile. She should be like this, right? Like, I just think Katie's expression isn't good for this article. Are they gonna use that same expression when the headline is a Methuselah virus takes over the world? Katie, like, looking happy. They're looking off to the <laughs> side, like, yeah, I'm kind of smart. Yeah, I'm a science correspondent. But, like, I look at this and I think they should change it to just absolute terror. <laughs> you, should, <laughs> you should write to Katie Hunt and say, look, Katie. You got to change your profile. Right? When you do this show, you have to change your profile. So, Mike, <laughs> I changed it from Mike's Trivia Time because you felt a little awkward that it was just Mike's Trivia Time. No, no, it wasn't. It wasn't me. It was the the, ter the term trivia. Oh, was the term trivia? Yeah, yeah. Hold on, the crowd is is pretty excited about this. I can't hear the crowd. You can't hear the crowd? No, there's no crowd. There's no crowd. No. Oh man, what about now? No crowd. I hear, I hear static. Oh, maybe oh, yeah, there's, yeah, there's a clapping there. There you go. No, that's it? That was it. All right, let's uh, let's go to Mike's <laughs> trivia time. There we go. I, I don't know why the the sound effects don't, don't work. It they looks they like popped on it. They popped oh. on at the end. Okay. Looks like Siberia, to be honest. They have been pulling mastodon tusk from the permafrost. It could be warm over there right now. I'm impressed that Glenn could see Siberia there. Mm. Pretty good. Oh, I, I, wherever it is, I hope that it snows there. Tonight. <laughs> At least once a year. <laughs> tonight. All right, Mike. Um, what do you want to call this section if it's not trivia time? I don't know. I, I'm trying to think of a good name for it. Maybe inspiration or stuff you need. <laughs> All right. I don't know. I'll think on it. Well, for next week. Ask the community what what should we name Mike's trivia yeah, what time? Should we tri name this because trivia to me just doesn't seem to work. Yeah, put your comments in the show notes below. Let us know what you think we should name Mike's trivia section to. But first, Mike, some trivia. Talk to me about what the Brompton Cemetery time machine is. This is a pretty interesting story. There was a there was a lady named Hannah Cortoy who uh, she was very mysterious. She was very rich, one of those you know, crazy rich people. And when uh, she died, um, they apparently, one of, one of her inventor friends, uh, what was his name? He was, uh, he was in, uh, I can't remember his name. Oh, Samuel Alfred Warner. And he apparently invented a time machine or a teleportation device. No one's really sure what. But when okay. she died, when uh, when Hannah died, it was put in the tomb with her. 
and the tomb is sealed with all these um, ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics, and it has a, a, a lock on it, a key, which the key has never been found, and the tomb has never been opened in 100 years. So is there a time machine in there? Is it well, a why would, what would give them any indication there was a time machine? The, the, well, somebody had a key and they lost it. And are you supposed to open a mausoleum? I, I was always under the impression like like that's your final resting place. Leave that person alone. Well, yeah, but but still, you know, if they put a time machine in there, I would definitely open it up to, to use it. Well, you'd open it up to use it. But what's the mystery behind? Well, the this? mystery is, is it in there? Do is they what know in there? What? Well, is what in there? The time machine. But even if it was the time machine was in there, she was still dead, right? Well, she was still dead, but just say, you know, I found the key and I'm like, I'm going to go check out and see if it is a time machine. I'd open it up. And if it was a time machine, it'd be the greatest thing ever. And so my question is, is if you really thought there was a time machine in there and you can think of all the different things you could do with a time machine and you also have a Ford F-150 with a trailer hinch. Like, why don't you just go there and like just knock that door down? Well, because then you're desecrating the cemetery. And okay. who know who knows? Maybe the time machine is built into the mausoleum. So if you ruin the mausoleum, time machine won't work. Maybe the time machine it looks a little bit like a TARDIS, doesn't it? Like it could actually maybe you could you could disguise it as a TARDIS, maybe. Yeah. Well, I um I, I what 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 kind of story could somebody write about this? Mike? I think this would be a great story. Is if somebody found or was you know um, inherited this strange key, and then they go back and they research this person's life. They figure out, oh, she maybe had a time machine built, and then they have to go and uh, discover if it is a time machine. You get the bad guys in there who are like, oh, we're always watching this time machine thing. We just couldn't find the key. And then you got the bad guys coming after you. You got the good guys. You got her or whoever using a time machine, jumping through time. You, I know you hate that. That's probably I hate that. I would rather time. have a very short story about how there is a teleporter in that in that cemetery, and there's another teleporter somewhere else, right? But the only place that can teleport is into that exact location. So every time you teleport, you just teleport into this mausoleum with the dead lady and you're like well this door's locked i forgot the key you, right like i'd be like that was dumb it'd be so a good place a funny to, story it'd be a good place to store all your stuff it would be i think they had didn't they do that in ozark oh yes they did yes they did it's a good place for storing That's, money yeah, i came up with another good idea which they stole before i thought of it <laughs> Well, Mike, I will tell you, this is a great find and a good inspiration for writers. I'm glad that you were able to share it with us tonight. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. All right, Mike. Well, that's it. I'm wondering if um, if uh, people um, don't already subscribe, if they, if they can leave a comment and subscribe. Uh, we love seeing you guys. Uh, we should have another guest back uh, next week, Mike. Um, I can't announce the guest yet because we haven't confirmed it, but we will have a guest come back. Mike, I will see you next week wearing your hat. All righty. Looking forward to it. I guess we're done. Yeah. <laughs>